Yes, diabetic manifestations. I really enjoy this. I don't know why. Um, uh, what are they and how can I recognize them in a chart? Um, it's one thing to have diabetes, but if you didn't know, diabetics uh, tend to have other organ problems uh, because it's, it, it affects the entire body. And uh, there's a few manifestations that you need to be aware of. The first one you're going to see is renal manifestations, which means anything that's uh, happening to your kidneys, uh, your urinary tract, so your kidneys, your bladders, bladder, not bladders. Um, uh, people with CKD or chronic kidney disease, they can get that because they are diabetic. Uh, these are just uh, this micro aluminuria. That just means they're <laughs> spilling this uh, protein type thing. Protein um, urea means they're spilling protein. Um, and nephropathy, not to be confused with neuropathy. This is nephropathy, uh, so that's the kidneys. The labs you'll see with people that have renal manifestations are going to be BUN, um, creatine, and CMP. The creatine you see almost always they're checking in uh, diabetics. They're constantly checking their creatine uh, level. Uh, another thing you'll see is they'll be on dialysis, and you know they wouldn't be they wouldn't have to be on dialysis if they didn't have uh, renal function uh, problems because of their diabetes, and that uh, is V45.11. Um, you'll you'll have to code that pretty often with um, if your person's having di dialysis. At two five zero point five ophthalmic manifestations uh, when you have diabetics. Um, that start having problems with their eyes, they get cataracts and uh, glaucoma, retinopathy, uh, blindness. Uh, it's very common to, to uh, have problems with your eyes if you're diabetic. And um, I remember when I was working for medical records, I went to work one day and I kept looking at the clock across the room and it was blurry. It's like it wasn't the day before and then it was and I was just, oh, I just knew there was something wrong with my sugar and and I went to the doctor and I was telling all the nurses and, and one of the doctors finally told me, he said, um, because if you're in medical records, they're at your fingertips, you can ask them, you know, and they said, uh, you know, if it was affecting your eyes, if you were having problems with your sugar and it was affecting your eyes, it's already too late. And he said, you know, you should just consider that it's time to get glasses. And that was actually the problem. But uh, you'll see that they have eye drops. But I, you know, I, I could, I was just telling them, it's not that I'm getting older. You know, I just can't see anymore. Uh, ophthalmic uh, conditions or consultations that uh, if a diabetic is having problems with their eyes, say their things are starting to look foggy because they're getting cataracts. Um, you will they're going to send them uh, straight to an um, ophthalmologist to have that checked because uh, the the uh, PCP isn't going to follow them for ophthalmic conditions so you'll see these consultations uh, neurological manifestations 250.6 this is where um, you know this is your nerves so people who have problems that are diabetic that have uh, their feet ache, their hands ache, you know, uh, their feet are always cold, they get tingling sensations and stuff, that that is because of the neuropathy in, um, and that's, you know, in my opinion, that's one of the first things to go. Now, I could be wrong, but as I'm reading charts and stuff of geriatric patients, it seems like if they're diabetic, the first things that start going is the, the neurological manifestations. Um, but what some people don't realize is this gastroparesis, that, you know, that is actually, um, it's what, if you break the word down, gastro is your stomach or your intestines, and it paralyzes parts of, of your digestive system. And it's all because of its neurological, it's the nerves. I just learned that at a um, webinar the other day. It, I had never thought about that. Another thing is if you're having neurological problems, you're going to see amputations. So, you know, they usually start out with a toe and pretty soon they've had two toes taken off. And next thing you know, they're getting uh, amputated at the knee. So, you know, be aware, aware of that. Uh, the 
those are uh, three common drugs that uh, that neurotin. I see that all the time with neurological manifestation. And um, when you're looking at the charts, look for the review assistance, and in the HPI, you're going to see the ting uh, tingling, numbness, pain in the hands and feet, and um, uh, even. Uh, uh, what? Well, there was another one that I saw the other. Uh, I can't think of it. Um, the two five zero point seven peripheral circulation disorders. Now, the neurolo uh, the neurological remember is doing the nervous system. Okay, but now we're getting into the circulatory system, and this I think happens. I I, I would say if they didn't have neurological problems, peripheral is going to be either first. Uh, PVD. Uh, uh, claudication, uh, gangrene, and that's when they start losing their toes. They're not getting any oxygen to the to those extremities, and um, then thus you've got amputations, atherosclerosis. Um, you're going to uh, see them doing ABIs, angiography, Doppler studies, ultrasounds. They're going to be checking their cholesterol and their triglycerides because if you already have problems and then you have high cholesterol. You know, if these uh, these veins and and uh, are not working properly and are getting backed up, you know, if you have cholesterol problems, that just man, it, it just makes it worse. Medications that you're going to see people with peripheral circulation uh, disorders, and I'm not even going to try to pronounce that first one, uh, Trental or the. Uh, Let's see, aspirin. They're on aspirin a lot. Heparin, warfarin, coumadin, Lovenox, All, all of those on the the that line are blood thinners, and so um, you're going to see them on. They're thinning the blood so it flows better, so that they can get the oxygen to the extremities, so these tissues don't die. And that's exactly what it does. It just kills the tissue because there's a lack of oxygen. Um, these are anti-platelet, uh, uh, anticoagulants, and thrombolytics. They're ultimately they're blood thinners. Um, your extremities will have decreased pulses. So when you're doing that review of systems, and they'll say, you know, uh, decreased pedal pulses means that you know when they touch you on the top of your foot. And uh, when he, he holds your foot, uh, he's checking to see if your feet are cold, but he's also checking those pulses to see claudication. It, it kind of means you, you have a limp. Uh, coldness, your feet will be very, very cold. You can't get your feet warm no matter what you do. Cramping in the calf, numbness and weakness. These are all side effects that um, are big heads up for um, um, people. If, if you have these problems and you're diabetic, you definitely want to go see the doctor because you're having problems. Was there another one after that? Oh, yeah. The two five zero point eight. Um, that's other spe uh, specified manifestations. Now, all of the ones that are above that, everything before two five zero point eight. Uh, I found out today in a webinar that I was in, those end up being chronic. So once you have uh, neuropathy, it's it's not going away. Um, now, if you know, so uh, once you start having ophthalmic problems, all of those, they're considered uh, comorbidities, and once you've got them, you've got them, and you're not going to get rid of them. You just have to treat them. Unlike 250.8, now, that's, um, that's kind of like a little fringe of uh, diabetic problems. These can be treated. If you have uh, hypoglycemia, uh, hold on just a second. Okay, I'm going to cough. Uh -oh. If you have hypoglycemia and uh, you've got weakness, confusion, uh, slurred speech, <clears throat> that um, you know that can be treated because you can usually take care of that with your diet. Osteomyelitis, uh, antibiotics, skin ulcers. You know, uh, people are going to have problems with. Um, <laughs> you going to look up osteomyelitis? No, I, I just correct the spelling. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah, I do those pretty fast. Um, skin ulcer that you're going to see when they're bedridden, uh, of course, they're going to get the uh, D-cubes, but pressure ulcers on their feet, you're going to see a lot of wound care. Uh, let's see. So with all of these diabetic codes, you would use in addition to the manifestation code. So if you were, if your person was diabetic and they got osteomyelitis, they would no longer be 250.00. They would be 250.80, uh, 
because they have osteomyelitis and then you would code the osteomyelitis on top of that or, or after that. Uh, same thing with uh, if your um, diabetic person's been coming into the office, get you know routinely having their feet checked and stuff like that and then all of a sudden they came in with a pressure ulcer on their left foot. He's no longer a 250.00, he's a 250.80 and then you code the pressure ulcer as well. Same thing with those others with the uh, neuropathy and stuff like that. So that's why you want to be very uh, aware of coding. If you don't code 250.80 and you code 250.00, you're not coding to the highest specificity. And um, and also, your doctor's not going to get paid as much because uh, what's paid out for 0 .80 and 0 .00 is two different amounts. So you want to make sure you're very aware of that when you're coding. And the doctor probably is not going to type in, or when he writes, if he writes codes, he's not going to write 250.80. He'll put 00. It's up to you as the coder to know that it's an 80 if they have a pressure ulcer. Get more CPC exam tips, coding certification training, and CEU credits. Go to www.codingcertification.org.